Hi folks, this is Aaron Pate with Pate Family Pastures. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do a pork cut sheet. We're gonna walk through all the instructions you need to get the exact cuts you want from the butcher when you order from Pate Family Pastures. So we use Pelkin Smoky Meats in Cribbits, Wisconsin as our beef and pork processor. We've had a great relationship with them for many years. And so we're gonna just walk right through the cut sheet that Pelkins uses for their cutting instructions when you order a half a hog or a whole hog from Pig Family Pastures. So we'll start at the top and work our way down here. Let's just start with the basics. We have your name and your phone number at the top. That next line that says animal owner, that's me, that's my name. Uh, hanging weight and slaughter date, you don't worry about that. The butcher fills that in. And then you check if you're getting a half a hog or a whole hog. Then you select the type of wrapper that you'd like your meat to be packed in. Cryovac, your vacuum sealed, it's a little bit more expensive, uh, but the meat keeps really well. It's clear packaging so you can see exactly what you have. Otherwise, a slightly cheaper route is to get the freezer wrap. That's the, the old school uh, butcher paper. Next, you specify how thick you'd like your steaks and pork chops cut. Um, Pelkin says three quarters of an inch is standard. I typically go for one inch um, when I get stuff cut for my myself. Um, but you get those can get those cut as thin or as thick as you like. Uh, I've had customers get them as thin as half an inch to as thick as two inches thick. Um, so it's your preference. Same thing on the roast weight. Three or four pounds is standard, but you can get them as small or as large as you'd like. And the next thing is to specify how many steaks or chops you'd like in a package. Um, I typically get two in a pack myself, um, but you can get as many as is a reasonable amount for, for you to use in a meal. Uh, you know, two, three, four, uh, doesn't matter, personal preference. So next it asks you to specify your bacon thickness. So a regular cut piece of bacon that you would typically buy at the grocery store is a 16th of an inch thick. And so if that is the kind of bacon that you're good with, then you can write 1 16th inch or just put regular cut on the bacon thickness line. If you'd like a thicker cut, which is about an eighth of an inch thick or twice as thick as a regular cut piece of bacon, you can write an eighth of an inch uh, or thick cut and that'll get you what you need. If you have any other different specifications, you'd like it super extra thick cut, you know, maybe 3 16 7 inch, something like that, you can go ahead and write that on there. They'll slice you bacon as thick as, as you'd like. And then finally at the top there, we have all the offal or organ meats. So stuff like the actual head, heart, liver, tongue, the fat, the leaf lard, and neck bones. So if any of those uh, kind of odds and ends interests you, you're able to keep those. Uh, maybe you uh, make head cheese. Uh, or you want to make like a country style pate with the pork liver or make Braunschweiger with the liver. Um, I know we always keep the leaf lard and my wife makes lard biscuits among other things but oh those lard biscuits are to die for. Nothing like uh, homegrown home rendered lard to make to bake with. Uh, the neck bones those are great for making broths or stocks for cooking in. So you can take all of it, you can take none of it, you can take some of it. Your choice. Now we're going to get start to get into the actual primal cuts. So the first one we're going to look at is the loin. That's the long muscle that runs along the back of the pig. And so that's where your pork chops or your loin roasts come from. And so on the Pelican's cut sheet, the default option is that they're going to slice the entire loin into pork chops. If you would like any section of that loin kept as a roast, then you should specify that by checking either rib, loin, or sirloin. That just is indicating which end of the of the loin is coming from. The rib section is towards the front, the loin is in the middle, and the sirloin is towards the back end of the pig. Your sirloin chops and roasts are generally going to be the largest cuts uh, of all the, the chops or the roasts. Um, and so you can get some chops, some roasts, uh, all chops or all roasts. The next primal we're going to look at is the shoulder. And so this is where the, your, your shoulder roast or sometimes it's called the butt roast or Boston butt. Um, this is where those cuts come from. And so you basically have two options with that. You can have that kept as large pork roasts like you would typically use for like
like a pulled pork recipe uh, or really anything that you, you would use a shoulder roast for. Uh, or you can get that sliced into pork steaks. Same cut, just sliced thinly. You can see on here that there's a shoulder blade bone inside there. That's going to be inside of all your pork steaks. Almost kind of looks like a, a T-bone type, type bone in there. I love pork steaks personally. It's my favorite cut. There's nothing better than slapping a pork steak on the grill. Um, and so you have the option of having that thing sliced completely into pork steaks, kept as whole butt roasts, or you can do half and half. Get one pork shoulder roast and half the other half of it cut into steaks. Next, we're going to you have the option of selecting what type of ribs you would like. So spare ribs are the actual ribs you know that run along along the side of the pig. Um, and so if you'd like to keep those spare ribs, then you're going to get a rack of ribs or maybe two racks of ribs. Country style ribs are completely different. Uh, the name is actually a misnomer. Country style ribs are actually cut from the shoulder blade. We just saw that picture of that pork shoulder steak and with that shoulder blade bone in it. Well, here's that same bone on those country style ribs. So it's actually cut off of the shoulder blade. Um, Personally, I'm not big on country style ribs. Uh, they don't really do anything special for me, but if you're looking for a kind of a rib eating experience that you don't have to, to gnaw through with your hands, you want to eat them with a fork and knife, uh, you know, country style ribs would be, would be the thing for you then. Pork hocks. So you have the option when it says sausage, that just means they're going to take the meat off the bone and grind it. Fresh means that you're going to get, you know, a whole hock, uh, but unsmoked or you can get it smoked. I personally very much enjoy smoked hocks. They make great, um, what you might call in Southern cooking seasoned meat. You, know, you throw it in with some collard greens, throw it into a crock pot uh, with some sauerkraut. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Um, throw it in your baked beans. Um, you know, smoked hocks are very, a very rich, flavorful uh, piece of meat. If you're not interested in fooling around with any of that, I recommend you just check the sausage part and they'll add it to your ground. Uh, which will then be made into either ground pork or sausage later on. Uh, next we have the ham, which is the back leg of the pig. And so that's where your, you know, your Easter ham is going to come from. And so uh, in the ham section on the cut sheet, it asks you again, do you want that sausage, which is again ground, fresh, meaning that you'd get this ham back, but it would not be cooked or smoked or anything. Uh, you know, when you buy ham at the grocery store, it's it's brined and smoked, you know, it's ready to eat. If you check fresh, it's just going to be a raw ham roast that you need to go ahead and, and cook in order to be safe to eat. Uh, and then smoked for $1.39 a pound. That's, you're going to end up with a ham that you're used to seeing um, if you check smoked. So then you can have that kept as a whole ham, which is going to be like, you know, a 13 to 16 pound big chunk of meat. Or you can check half ham, which means that they're going to cut that ham in half. Uh, so you have two, you know, seven or eight pound hams. Uh, personally, that's what I would recommend. Um, it's pretty hard to cook an entire ham uh, in one in one fell swoop. Uh, you can select to have it cut into half a ham. Yeah, half of the ham will be cut into a normal ham, and the rest of it sliced into ham steaks. Or you can get the whole thing sliced into ham steaks. And so ham steaks, that's the picture we see on the right. That's literally just taking the ham and slicing it, you know, half, three quarters of an inch thick. That's something that people oftentimes use for breakfast, you know, a ham steak for breakfast. Dice it up, throw it in your egg sort of thing. Um, very versatile uh, piece, a little bit easier to deal with um, in a ham steak form versus, you know, ro roasting or baking, baking a whole ham. So uh, oftentimes for my own personal use, I'll get half ham and half steaks. And then we got to get a ham for... A big occasion meal and then I got ham steaks I can make ham sandwiches or, or breakfast ham or whatever the rest of the year. Bacon so we touched on bacon a little bit before on the thickness um, but so there's another section on the cut sheet here that asks you if you want the, the it's really the belly is where the ham comes from on a pig asking if you want that ground uh, which I think would be quite a quite a tragedy to do um, you can keep it fresh as, as pork belly. You know, it's, it's not brined, it's not smoked. Um, that would just be raw pork belly. Uh, or you can get it smoked. And that's, you know, if you check that option, then you're going to get back your normal ham, that you, or excuse me, bacon, that you uh, expect to get. Bacon um, is the most sought after cut on a pig, but it's also 
the least common cut on a pig, unfortunately. On a half a hog, you can expect to get somewhere between seven to 10 pounds of bacon um, per half hog. So there's not a ton of bacon on a, on a pig, unfortunately. Just comes from that thin belly flap. So the picnic, we're moving back actually towards to the shoulder of the pig, but the picnic um, is the, the cut that comes as it starts to turn into the actual arm, you know, upper arm muscle of the pig. And so this is one that you can uh, grind into your sausage or your ground pork. You can keep it fresh as a picnic roast, or um, some people like to have it smoked. Um, and so then you almost end up with like a second ham um, out of the picnic. I oftentimes just end up adding it to the ground because there's not a whole lot of ground on a pig, quite honestly. Um, so if you're looking to get some more sausage, that's a good piece to, to add to your ground pile. Speaking of which, so then at the very bottom of the sheet, we have our ground or sausage options. Uh, so like I mentioned, pigs, there's quite frankly not a lot of trim on a pig. Pigs are extremely efficient animals when it comes to cutting. There's not a lot of waste on them. And so if you're looking to get some sausage made, you're gonna need to make some sacrifices. So like I mentioned, that picnic roast, that's a good one to throw in your ground. Um, if you're not big on hocks, throw that in there. Um, if you're looking to get like, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds of brats, you're gonna need to sacrifice the ham as well, uh, or make some other hard choice in order to get enough ground meat to make, to make a decent batch of sausage. So if you are only getting a half a pig, you're really limited to just one single option. You can either get just plain ground pork, which doesn't cost you anything extra, or you can make one sausage selection. So you can get one type of breakfast sausage or one type of brat or Italian or Polish, um, you know, whatever the, the flavor you'd like it to be. So ground pork comes in a one pound tube, uh, just like you buy in, in the grocery store, you know, Jimmy Dean's type you know, packaging. Um, Pelkins has an enormous variety of flavors of sausages. This pork sheet, uh, excuse me, this cut sheet does not do it justice. If you go on the Pelkins website, you'll see the listing of all their flavors, and I'll link in the description below to that website so that you can see all the various flavors they have. I believe they have over 60 different sausage flavors to choose from. Um, so you can get those made in bulk, which just comes, you know, loose in a tube. So for example, the wife and I oftentimes will get some bulk Italian sausage. It's really easy to throw in spaghetti sauce or make lasagna or whatever. Um, and so that's a little bit cheaper option to do it in bulk. Um, like breakfast patties, you can get breakfast sauces made in patties or you can get them made in the links. Um, same thing with like your brats. Um, you can get brat patties. Uh, you can get your typical brat links. Um, anything that you get in the link is $1.99 extra. Um, so lots and lots of different options for, for ground. But remember, if you're only getting a half a hog, you unfortunately have to choose just one option for either plain ground pork or some one single type of sausage. If you're getting a whole hog, there might be enough to do two small batches of sausage. Minimum batch size for a sausage is 12 and a half pounds in order to make it worthwhile to, to run it through the, through the sausage stuffer. 12 and a half pounds is their minimum batch size. So again, if you are looking to get a decent amount of sausage back, you're gonna have to sacrifice some of your other cuts such as the hocks picnic or maybe even ham in order to get more meat to make sausage out of. And finally, at the very bottom, there's this section for special instructions. So if you're looking to get one of those special flavors of sausage, or maybe you wanna get two different types of sausage, if you're getting a whole hog, this is the place where you would write that, those details out. Uh, if you're getting a whole hog, maybe you want one half of the pig treated differently than the other. For example, you're gonna keep one ham and the other ham you want thrown into your ground so you can get some sausage, you know, that would be something to spell out here. Basically just anything that's not specifically covered in the checklist, you write it out in those special instructions. So thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to you. Uh, help clarify how you go through that Pelican's cut sheet to get back the cuts of meat that you want when you buy from Pate Family Pastures. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at PateFamilyPastures.com, find our contact info there, and you can place an order and shop on our website there as well. Again, PateFamilyPastures.com. Thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.